Lovely to be here this evening. And you are Ronald McDonald. Does that make you a McDonald, as in that's your clan? The longest version of my name is Ronald McDonald, younger of Clan Ronald. Mac, as you know, means son of. Clan means children. So I'm Ronald, son of Donald, of the children of Ronald. And we began a small dynasty in the 12th century, having picked up the pieces from the Viking invasions of the late 8th century, and formed a, ki a sea kingdom under Somerled, King of the Isles. And all McDonald's, of whom there are around 6 million in the world, descend from this territory which came down from Ross down to Argyll and included all the Hebrides and the west coast of Scotland. What, what does um, Burns Knight mean to you? I mean, Burns is quite a, a recent chap by comparison with your family history, but uh, do you rate Burns, Ravi Burns? Wait, wait, wait. Um, Burns is incredibly important and he helped unify a Scottish consciousness, but it's slightly counterintuitive how that all came about. Now, Burns's father was a Jacobite soldier. Burns himself was pro the French Revolution, anti-monarchy, and has really become a symbol of Republican sympathies. But he had a sort of a, a lean towards the Jacobites. And the Jacobites, just to, just to keep people up to date, these were supporters of the Stuart dynasty uh, who believed that the Stuarts should be on the English and Scottish thrones at a time when actually the Hanoverians were. James VI of Scotland and I of England inherited England. So the Scots really inherited England, but the Stuarts wouldn't renounce their Roman Catholicism. So um, the throne went to George I. What do you describe the language in which Rabbi Burns writes? Do you call that Scots? Well, Scots was a lowland dialect with its own um, manner of speech and vocabulary, which was unique to lowland Scotland and spread throughout. Whereas we're from, and Robbie had a sort of an affiliation to the Highlands, but we're from the Highlands where we spoke Gaelic. And Gaelic is a language that I, as an English speaker, would have no chance of understanding. Not but at all. Scots, on the ho I would follow probably 60% of Scots. Gaelic is unrecognisable in any form at all. It's a completely separate language. How do you normally celebrate Burns Night? Very rarely do we have two people celebrating Burns Night. So it's the opposite of Valentine's Night. It's normally a group of friends celebrating their love of each other and life. And it's normally a four-course dinner with haggis as second course and maybe some venison or beef and then maybe a lovely pudding like a cranachan then followed by a selection of Scottish cheeses. There's a sort of an etiquette of speeches that run through, throughout the dinner with piping at interludes. Well, in our paired back Burns Night, where you and I are alone, uh, shall, we, shall we cut to the chase? Shall we cut to the haggis? Well, let us call the haggis in. Sodgy face, great chieftain on a fun race, a wind of all you take that place, paint strength with him, and will, and you want your grace, as lands for him. The groan and trench are there you fill, your hair they shake at this to hill, your pen will help the land of ill, in time of need, and through your pores the Jews distill, like amber beat, his knife, so rustic labour deft. I'll cut you up, you ready slicked, pledging your gushing entails bricked, like on a ditch, and then, oh, 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 And then you drink your toast there, Michael, pick up your whiskey, and it's Slangevar, Slangevar! Slangevar! Now, the haggis has been piped and addressed. Are we getting near the stage where we can eat it? I think we're within seconds. <laughs> the big question you should ask yourself is whether or not you wish to combine this Aberfeldy 12-year-old, which is a lovely, lovely malt, with your haggis, either by tasting with the haggis or by pouring it on. A lot of people, 66.7% of our haggis diners, pour the whiskey on the haggis. So what I suggest to do, Michael, is cut open your haggis, 
pour a little bit of tiny amount of whiskey on one little portion of that haggis and raise that to your mouth, enjoy it, or taste it, and if you enjoy it, slosh the rest on. Mmm, that is delicious. No doubt that whiskey and haggis go together, whether you mix them on the plate or in the mouth. Beautiful combination. Um, we better tell some people what haggis is. What's in there? Well, haggis is really an unevolved medieval sausage. Mm. And I think throughout Europe, even many parts of Africa and other parts of the world, mm. whatever nutrition was locally available, whether it's just blood from an animal or whatever parts of the animal remained, would be, would be combined with local cereals, what spices were available, to, and tied up in a pudding. Because people didn't, in the old days, they didn't have sort of frying pans and smart kitchens. They just had a, a fire and a cauldron. So it'd be tied in, in the stomach of an animal and, and then boiled. And because of the sheep lung, um, haggis is banned in the USA. And we've been campaigning for many a year to have the Americans lift their ban, which I think had the 28% of the Americans who have Scottish descent, I don't know how many generations to go back for that, but there's a big chunk of America has Scottish descent. And we're denying them their birthright on a silly little quibble. No, that's an important battle to fight. Where are my bashneeps? So your bashneeps are the or is the orange on the right. And that means that they're parsnips, does it? Really, they're Swedish turnips, and the English called them Swedes, mm -hmm. and the Scots called them neeps, and they were really introduced as, an, as a fodder crop in the 18th century. The potato was also introduced in the 18th century, and most of the spices in this haggis are really 19th century, because pepper, nutmeg, and all these other spices weren't widely available in poorer households going back in time. Uh, Scottish people have um, Burns Night, they have St Andrew's Night, and they have New Year and Hogmanay. Which of these festivals is the most important? I think the most important for Scottish consciousness, definitely not the Greek saint. I think it's Burns Night. I mean, just, it, it, he used to manage to get his tentacles into everything that was Scotland. And it's all sort of there, from whiskey to haggis to the highlands to the dialect of being a smart thinker, being... Now, he was like the punk rock and Elvis and the Beatles in one. He was revolutionary. He had a sweet, sweet voice that comes through his poetry. But he's also a great... No, he's a great intellect, a great thinker, a forward thinker, you know, sort of a humanitarian. So he was a pop star, and he just pulls together everything with Scotland... And I think he's a great symbol of everything that's got Scottish. And there are more statues to Burns than to anyone other than Queen Victoria and various deity in the world. I wonder if I might propose a toast to the Pan MacDonald and, of course, the immortal name of Robbie Burns. The so MacDonalds and Robbie Burns, Saint-Gervais. And don't forget the MacDonald on your tie.